I love trains. Who doesn't? When I say I love trains, I'm not simply talking about the train journey in itself, which I personally find more comforting and relaxing than its road and air counterparts. I'm rather trying to convey the sheer amazement one feels just by looking at a train. A potent symbol of modernity and mobility, trains are one of the major lifelines for socio-economic growth. We might be well aware of cinema and literature's enduring romance with the railways. Particularly, cinema has close ties with trains. But before looking into cinema's historical bond with the train as a setting, an image and otherwise, let's simply contemplate on the cinematic experience and a train ride. The human perception of passage of time changes with each space and scenario. Trains and cinema, its graceful forward momentum, makes us feel the impact of time like no other space. Meditative calm, epiphanies and enthusiasm can be its gifts. We make an inward journey alongside the literal one. As the New Yorker film critique Anthony Lane beautifully puts it in his review of Wes Anderson's Darjeeling Limited, a trained traveler and a moviegoer are required to sit with their own fellow men and to start their journey at a particular time, not of their own choosing. Both are left alone, yet their privacy, tinged with dreaminess, is of a very public kind. Set a movie on a train and you get the best of both worlds, for your audience will feel an instant kinship with the souls packed together on screen. It is said that the joy is in the journey, not the destination. Trains, cinema and even life are a testament to that statement. Now, let's begin our exploration of cinema's powerful bond with the trains. It was December 28, 1895, the day of Lumia Brothers' first public screening of their short documentary films in Paris. One among them was The Arrival of a Train. It's a 50-second clip that shows the single unedited shot of a train pulling into a train station in the French coastal town of La Ciuta. It was said that the first audiences to see this clip on a big screen screamed and ran away to the back of the theater thinking that the train was heading directly towards them. Today, this story about early moviegoers shocked by the image of a moving train is fascinating to recount. However, it's just one of the lovely myths we often encounter in the world of cinema. At the same time, I would like to imagine that trains played a crucial role in liberating the rudimentary cinematic form of the 1890s from simply focusing on mundane street scenes and activities. Christian Hayes of Screen Online concisely puts it like this. Early train films are often records of one modern technology marveling at the other. The sense of wonder felt in Lumia Brothers' actuality films gave way to the visceral thrills of phantom rides. A camera was mounted in front of a train or tram and later in the boats. The resulting screen journey gave a thrilling experience to the spectators of the time. In modern cinema, there are lots of examples for phantom ride shots. Since the phantom ride brought dynamism to the frame, a film pioneer used it to convey a little story. A train is about to enter a tunnel 
A couple in a set that's modeled like a train compartment briefly kiss and the train exits the tunnel. This was one of the earliest instances of editing and continuity in a film. Film scholar Mark Cousins calls it the moment cinema attempted to say meanwhile. In the same year of Wright Brothers' first flight, Edwin S. Porter made the 12-minute spectacular-laden narrative film, The Great Train Robbery. This facilitated the birth of the archetypal American genre, the Western. Trains are a staple element in Westerns. From John Ford's Iron Horse, Now, wait, wait, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Trains came first, not cinema. It was the steam locomotives of the early 1800s that were referred to as the Iron Horse. And the sweeping rugged terrain of the American frontier was conquered by the railroad. While railroads are a symbol of modernity and national progress, it is also a matter of perspective. For the Native Americans, railroads brought imperialism and gradually led to the territorial division of their lands. Nevertheless, the American frontier captured the imagination of many white Hollywood filmmakers. From John Ford's early silent film Iron Horse to Sergio Leone's Spaghetti Westerns, operatic dramas were built around the railroads. By the late 1910s, trains in cinema were no longer a novelty. But the Russians in their own unique way brought trains and cinema together. The agitation and propaganda trains or agitprop trains traveled from Moscow to circulate and promote Leninist reforms and government schemes. Renowned Soviet filmmakers like Ziga Verte and Medvedin were part of the train. They shot documentary footage, edited it, and screened it to the masses. While in agitprop trains, films were shown when the trains are stationary, in Britain, movies were screened on the move. The blacked-out carriages of cinema car is yet another instance of both the modern technologies embracing each other. Over the years, Filmmakers across the globe have used trains as a tool for symbolism as well as a platform for conflict. Then slowly, trains became the central narrative premise, a prism to look into human behavior. The spatial restriction brings contradictory personalities together and allows the drama to flourish. Yet, the forward momentum of the train journey keeps changing the dynamics. Therefore, train imagery presented multiple opportunities. And, if you are an Indian filmmaker, why not stage fun songs on top of the train? But let's first start our journey with the little big man of cinema who created one of the greatest spectacle films using a locomotive. Buster Keaton, the stony-faced silent era comedian with sad eyes, was a master at orchestrating controlled chaos. His genius in telling stories through stillness and movement is unparalleled and, in fact, underappreciated. Keaton's spatial humor was enhanced by his interest in the machinery. Particularly, he was enchanted by the stream locomotives. In a second feature-length production, Our Hospitality, Keaton designed the replica of a primitive steam engine that was based on the 1829 model known as Stephenson's rocket. 
The sight of the train itself was very amusing and Keaton constructed a set of innovative gags by utilizing many mishaps during the journey. Keaton used the comic anticipation he built using the steam engine in our hospitality to great effect in his silent masterpiece, The General. The action-oriented visual jokes involving the train are brilliantly and methodically amplified throughout the narrative. Keaton ends the film with a jaw-dropping and history-making shot. It was a make-it-or-break-it scenario. The master comedian made it by breaking it. I mean, Keaton's crew built a bridge, set it afire, and a steam engine was driven over to make it collapse into the river below. A single shot and no tricks. By the time Keaton made The General, stream trains made travel faster. It also carried food, manufactured goods, mail and many more. But in Europe, in the late 1930s and early 40s, the railroad network was utilized for crimes against humanity. It carried brutally uprooted lives to their death. From the American Civil War days, railroad networks shaped military strategy. But the Nazis used the railroad for a much more sinister purpose. A staggering range of coordination existed between the German ministries in order to transport millions of Jews and others in cattle cars. Cinema, always an acute observer of time and space, has deftly portrayed the moments when the moving marvel on tracks was turned into a box of entrapment and doom. The SS or the military would confiscate the Jewish property and with proceeds, especially from bank deposits, would pay for transport. That the Jews themselves had would to have, pay for, absolutely. Their, for their days. You have, to remember, you have to remember one basic principle. There was no budget for destruction. In the movies set during the World War II and the Nazi era, railroad networks and the armored trains were the chief antagonists. Anyway, trains don't run on their own, right? It needs a lot of human effort. Hence, the resistance to the Nazi menace took the form of sabotaging the railroad infrastructure. Such courageous tactics of the resistant movements including the railroad workers, were meticulously documented and also became a fodder for action blockbusters. All these locomotives crashing and getting derailed in John Frankenheimer's The Train will make the viewers cheer since that serves a good moral purpose. Also, it pumps up adrenaline. For instance, this massive crash sequence was carefully staged without any trick shots or special effects, like in Keaton's engine comedy. Trains weren't always the villains in the films set in this era. To the brave on-screen soldiers, it bestowed a hope for freedom. For this naive and young Russian soldier, a cross-country train journey makes him closely observe the human cost of war. Elsewhere, the Danish provocator Lars von Trier waves a hypnotic train ride set in post-war Germany to symbolize the foggy, uncertain future of Europe. All these cinematic tales predominantly gaze at the lovely beast on track 
from the outside or observes its passengers in the backdrop of a larger collective conflict. Aren't there more to trains in cinema? How do they serve as a motif and elevate a narrative? Are trains only used as symbols of modernity in cinema? And the most important question one might have is, where are the stories that we as a passenger can relate with? It might be a wonderful sight to see the locomotive arriving at the station platform. But once you enter into the claustrophobic train compartment, what do you see? Strangers and their cool yet praying eyes. Who are they? What's going on in their mind? That mixture of anxiety and curiosity at the back of your mind hosts rich possibilities when seen through a cinematic lens. The result might be pleasing or terrifying. In fact, cinema's romance with the railways truly begins at the point its form rose up to face the challenges of limited space and stage a humane story that deeply resonates with the viewer. What are those electrifying and soothing tales? We will continue our journey soon. Because, though I love trains, a long journey can be exhausting. Namaskar.